Okay, hello again, Tom McGuire, and I'm going to do a review on Think Like a Rocket Scientist by Ozan Varal. I'm going to be telling you in this review about the great Donald Rumsfeld. A bit random, I know, but you'll find out in a little while. I'm going to talk about why boredom is really important, and hopefully I'm not boring the absolute crap out of you already. Please hang around, give me a like, that'd be really good, maybe a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. This is a good review, stick with it. Um... Imposter syndrome is another one I'm going to look at as well, and why we should why we should be hunting antelope, not mice. So those vegans amongst you might want to get out of here, but you know, it's just a metaphor, so don't, you know, don't take it too seriously. But anyway, really good book. I absolutely love this book. Really enjoyed it. Um, he's a really clever guy. He's basically telling us how to think more like a rocket scientist. He's he says right at the beginning that he's not going to bore us with kind of science and physics and all that sort of stuff which is thank thank god because i'd have just i like i like to hear about kind of popular science stuff stuff made complicated science made simple for people like myself but um once it gets kind of academic and that i just switch off i hated that stuff in school so yeah it's not about that at all it's about kind of opening our minds and how we can be more how we can think more like a rocket scientist when it comes to our business when it comes to our own kind of personal development which is brilliant basically so Donald Rumsfeld, I said I would talk about, didn't I? He's the first one. So he gave a funny speech, didn't he, a little while ago, a few years ago, where he said, and I'm going to read this out to you because I haven't memorised it, it's not worth memorising. He said that there are known knowns, there are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns the ones we don't know we don't know and if one looks throughout the history of our country and other free countries it is the latter category that tend to be the difficult ones so he's basically saying that the unknown knowns the ones that we don't know we don't know are the difficult ones cool okay so Ozan talks about this and he actually says how there's a condition an almost unpronounceable condition called being anas anasognosic, I think, where it's like a medical condition where someone is suffering from something and then they're just not aware they're just not aware of it. And the example is maybe someone's paralyzed and they're in a chair or something, and you go to ask them to pick up a pen, and it says them saying, Don't be so stupid, I can't pick up a pen, I'm paralyzed, you ask. They'll say something like, No, no, no. And you'll be like, why not? I'm like, oh, I'm just tired, aren't I? Or I've just got no use for a pen. So they're just they they're not aware of of their condition. Basically, really strange, really strange one. And that's what he talks about in this book. He kind of says how we are so unaware of so many different things that we just kind of get used to doing what we know. Um, we get into our own habits. As we get older, we get even more habitual. We get even more stuck. Um, we suffer from something called the Einstein effect. Um, which basically comes from when we were taught in school how to do kind of science experiments. For example, we were sort of we were given a set experiment with a with a set kind of um, answer or solution, I suppose. So you were basically made to do it until you got it right, and you know there was one right way of doing it, and that was it. Whereas actually, we should be taught to think outside the box and to try to try different things, try different ways of getting to the same result, or different ways of getting to a different, better result, possibly. But we're kind of taught and brainwashed from a young age that there's a there's a set answer, there's a way to do it, and you need to learn that until you get that right. Well, actually, what is that teaching you other than just learning how to learn things for the sake of it? You're not actually thinking, you're not doing anything. You, you're just you're just being programmed to be part of the a, a cog in the machine rather than someone or something to kind of make things better and kind of improve on things. So, thank God some people kind of break break out of that mindset because if they didn't, we'd never get anywhere, would we? We'd be completely stuck doing the same stuff all the time. So he talks about that. Um, there's also something called functional fixedness, which is really interesting. If you look up the, is it called the candle experiment online? That's quite interesting. I won't tell you exactly what happens. Just look it up. It's it's worth a look. Um, that's more where we get kind of stuck with the way we use objects. Um, we kind of get stuck. We've used something a certain way. We always use it that way. And then we kind of lose the ability to think outside and how we could use it in a different way and kind of be a bit more innovative i suppose innovation being a really important thing when it comes to business and personal development and success obviously um 
He talks about working on our on developing our childlike curiosity, which is something I really like because I consider myself to be quite childlike. Now to have quite a lot of a childlike curiosity, I, I have a real interest in lots of different varied things and kind of, you know, I've always been into sport and keeping fit, but I'm similarly into really geeky things. Like I really love the I really love the idea of astronomy and I'm getting a set of binoculars soon. Not a telescope, binoculars because they're better parameters. Because if you've got a telescope, you don't know what you're looking at. And if you've got binoculars, you can have a quick glimpse up and you get a better idea of what's up there. So I'm getting some binoculars soon to do that. And I'm thinking that's going to be part of my kind of relaxation as well. Just kind of getting outside of my own head a little bit and <clears throat> doing something that's just innocently kind of nice and relaxing. And just something that's, funnily enough, I didn't realise has been done for hundreds of years. Uh, thousands of years we've been looking at stars and stuff. I can't I can't believe it. It's crazy. Um, but yeah... It's it's mad, isn't it? I say thousands of years. We've been looking at stars since day one, haven't we, basically? But actual astronomy goes back quite a few hundred years, which is really, really, I was quite surprised about. Um, I think I'd heard that when I was younger, to be fair, in school, but it just kind of, it was one of those things that I relearned again recently and kind of thought, my God, yeah, that's that's really surprising, isn't it? Maybe it's not. Maybe telescopes are simple. I don't know, whatever. But... <laughs> I'm going to do that because I think it's going to help me relax a little bit and just kind of get out of the kind of personal development, pushing forward all the time mindset and just give me a bit of time to decompress and relax a little bit in the, in the way that watching crap on TV doesn't for me, basically. Um, so that's that, the Einstelling effect and functional fixedness. Um, he says we should spend the day questioning our assumptions, which I think is a really good piece of advice. So we should, rather than kind of suffering from this thing that, Matthew Syed talks about in his book Rebel Ideas uh, Echo Chambers I've talked about that before in that review in Rebel Ideas which I did ages ago this idea that we surround ourselves with like-minded people we don't like to be around people who completely disagree with us so we're constantly having our opinions kind of um, validated which is really unhealthy basically if you think about it for more than about five minutes um, so question our assumptions you know just think about basic stuff that we kind of take for granted and actually what would happen if it didn't work like that, if it worked some other way. Think about people's political opinions that normally really wind us up and we can't understand and maybe just sit down and try and use that brain we've got to think about why that person might possibly think that way and why, you know, what kind of life they might have had to have caused them to think that way. And actually the way you think, you know, why are you so passionately kind of attached to it? And why And could you not actually imagine for a second thinking something else possibly? You know, it's worth having a think. Um, so spend the day or at least spend some time questioning your assumptions. Risk our significance, he says, like Elon Musk, who risks over many, however many billions when he was, when he was doing, um, what's the car company called? Tesla, when he was doing Tesla or when he was doing... Um, SpaceX, there was massive risk, he says, of, I can't remember which one it was, I, th I think Tesla really suffered in the 2008 crash, excuse me, and that came really close, but I think also SpaceX probably came has come really close as well in terms of things really massively failing because it's just so expensive, and actually people would say, why would someone who's worth 15, 20 billion plus or whatever it is he's worth, why would they risk so much of their wealth doing something when they can actually just sit back and chill out for the rest of their days now, well because those sorts of people aren't like that. You don't become worth that much if that's your attitude. You don't start off saying, I'm going to make 20 billion and I'm going to stop and just lie on a beach all day. You you have to be driven to just keep going and keep going and keep pushing and trying to do more. And actually what people don't realise is that when people get to that stage, they actually enjoy it. So he, he's become worth 20 billion and now he's got this huge, an even bigger dream of, I want to get people to Mars. I want to think that, I want to go to my deathbed thinking that I've seriously contributed, you know, positively contributed to the human race and actually possibly been, you know, the, I don't know, the beginnings of of uh, the human race surviving somewhere else possibly and, and uh, exploring the rest of the solar system and beyond. That's his next big dream, basically. And he risked his, he risked his significance as one of the richest people in the world to achieve that you know yeah okay some people would say oh he'd have he'd have been left with how many million oh poor elon well of course okay he wouldn't have starved obviously and he probably would have got back up off his ass and built up his millions again fairly quickly to be fair but he did risk 
being an absolute laughing stock, people would have turned around and it would have been as as Ozan says in the book, it would have been a Harvard Business School case study of the rich guy who lost how many billion on this banana bananas crazy idea that he came up with, which they all knew was going to fail to begin with. So yeah, he, he massively risked his significance and actually people who push on and make these jumps and become more successful do risk their significance. You know, you might be you might be a budding entrepreneur and you're you're getting paid fairly decent money you're on you're on course to retire fairly comfortably but you decide you know what that's not enough for me i want to i want to do more than that i i know i'm capable of doing more than that i want to push myself harder you risk losing all of that to get to that next stage and that's what we need to do we need to kind of get outside of our own egos a little bit risk being a bit embarrassed risk looking a bit silly risk being the fool as as jordan peterson often says you've got to be the fool before you become the master you've got to just do some you've got to actually just do it whether it whether it's good or not basically um uh did i say about building boredom into the day so yeah trying to make sure you've got time to be bored he says about so that you know those in the shower moments when ideas come to you because you kind of switched off a little bit and he says it's important you know have those times in the day set aside to be bored and when you are feeling bored don't just automatically go for your phone and try and learn something else just try to be at peace <laughs> with your boredom to a certain extent and and try and and try and understand that's going to that's going to help you it's going to take a bit of discipline to do that but i, I think that's good advice um abraham maslow the guy who did the hierarchy of needs he said that the story of the human race is a story of men and women selling themselves short apparently and i'd never heard that before so for some people that's quite a depressing thought isn't it that you know when we're all gone that'll be that that'll be our story we all just sold ourselves short really could have achieved more you know what a waste oh well get the points down you know never mind i actually think that's quite quite exciting because to me that just means we're we've got so much more potential than we give us give ourselves credit for and actually we might never reach our full potential but we can kind of tap in and and, and achieve more and, and hopefully enjoy life a bit more is it about enjoying life or is it actually just about feeling that you've achieved a bit more meaning and purpose and actually that you just feel you just feel better for that maybe who knows um imposter syndrome that's a really common one that people always talk about when it comes to personal development and entrepreneurship and things because entrepreneurs take risks and they try new things and people often say they feel like imposters in certain situations and michelle obama talks about that i'm reading her book at the minute becoming it gets crazy reviews so I, I i've been meaning to read that for a while but i decided the other day to give that a go i'm, I'm not far into it yet but i'm enjoying it it's really good and she talks about imposter syndrome and how she says that you always feel like you always get it. You know, you're always going to feel like it. She says she sat at some of the most powerful tables in the world, uh, non-profits, corporations, sat on corporate boards, been at G summits, sat in at the UN. And she says, they're not that smart. And that's something I can flip. Well, I not guess I can relate to it because I can't in any way relate to Michelle Obama, but on a much smaller scale, I can, I can understand where she's coming from in terms of, in my business, I've been around a lot of people who are at the top of their game, sort of directors, CEOs, people like that. <clears throat> and many of them are just fairly normal people who aren't necessarily that clever. One or two of them, you definitely look at and you think, wow, you're pretty talented, you, you're pretty bright, you're pretty creative, you know, you're you're pretty shrewd. Some of them definitely. And you look at it and think, God, I could learn something from you. You'd make a good mentor. But a lot of them, most of them, I'm afraid to say, are just kind of like, wow if you can do it i certainly can or oh, that's that person certainly can you know you look and you just think you knew the right people you said the right things at the right time and you've got there and you're now kind of hanging on paddling under the water uh, panicking <laughs> probably not probably just blissfully unaware and just carrying on and doing all right but yeah so don't feel like an imposter just get on with it just just take the dive just push just see it as an opportunity and try and see it as a game if you fall flat on your face you can get back up again can't you you know it's just kind of it's this fake it till you make it, which isn't necessarily a great thing to think, I don't think. I've heard someone else say make it until you make it, which isn't quite such a good saying in a way, but I understand what they mean. It's kind of like, just be that person, just be it and do it until you kind of get there and actually it becomes part of your subconscious and part of your whatever being, I suppose. But yeah, so imposter syndrome, that's really interesting. Um, did I say about hunting antelope and not mice? Did I say about that one? I think I did. That was pretty good. Um, and that's that's by someone called Newt Gingrich. Gingrich? And he says, and I'm going to read this one out as well. Because funnily enough, I can't memorise absolutely everything. 
Um, he says that a lion is fully capable of capturing, killing and eating a field mouse, but it turns out that the energy required to do so exceeds the caloric content of the mouse itself. So a lion that spent its day hunting and eating field mice would slowly starve to death. A lion can't live on a field mi mouse, it says mice, can't live on a field mouse. A lion needs antelope. Antelope are big animals. They take more speed and strength to capture and kill. And once killed, they provide a feast for the lion and her pride. So ask yourself at the end of the day, did I spend a day chasing mice or hunting antelope? Fair play. That's all I can say. Um, yeah. Go after the big stuff. Don't just follow everyone else and think, oh, that person's doing that. I'd better do that as well. Because that's what happens. We all just follow each other and just go after the small stuff, go after the mice where the so-called one percenters or whoever they are, they're, they're going after the antelope. It turns out it's not actually that difficult to go for the antelope particularly. It's just that most of us don't bother, so they've got the opportunity. So go for the big stuff. Dream big. Take your moonshots. He talks about moonshots right at the beginning of the book. Um, don't celebrate failure for the sake of failure. Celebrate what you can learn from it and celebrate your success that's come from, from those many failures that you've had. Um, try to pay more attention to near misses um success when you are successful and you've been successful for a certain period of time be really careful because that's when people get complacent he says and that's really really true you know we start to get arrogant we start to get self-entitled and cocky and uh, it's it's easy now no it isn't you've got to keep innovating you've got to keep pushing keep your eye on the ball keep developing awareness of those near misses you know and 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 kind of be thankful when you get away of it but also make sure you learn from it so it doesn't happen again it's about fine-tuning and really kind of just being being kind of humble. And Mike Tyson said, didn't he, something about be humble or humbleness will come upon you or something like that. I'll put it in afterwards. I can't remember, but it's quite a basic quote, but quite a good one. Um, but yeah, brilliant book. I absolutely love this. I love the idea of space exploration and, and stuff. And yeah, rocket science, it's brilliant. And to have a personal development book from someone who's done that kind of thing, I just, find, I just think it's a really interesting angle on it. It's a really good book. Highly recommended.